Welcome again, Corey and Jan here. Um, beer drinking experience. Actually, while I've got the phone over here, this is Colorado today. We got about six to eight inches of snow outside and we're inside in this warm little nice library drinking a La Trappe, Trappist Double. Um, it's got an ABV of seven. We think this is probably two to three years old. Um, we've had La Trappe before and you can see here, this is much darker than some of the other ones that we've been doing over the last week. It has a murkiness to it. La Trappe is one of the few Trappist breweries outside of Belgium. Right, it's called Koningshaven, and it's in the Netherlands. Um, and uh, we're going to be sampling this today. La Trappe, hilariously enough, was one of the beers that we drank when we were waiting for West Vletter and 12 to be sold at our local liquor store. And for those of you who don't know, West Vletter and needed to repair their monastery. Their roof needed a major repair. And so what they ended up doing was doing a limited time release. The liquor store only got so many cases of it. And then they were selling their beer to Americans, which usually you can only buy it at the monastery in West Vletter in Belgium. And they were selling 12 to raise funds to repair their roof. And as we were waiting, I think it was like eight hours, yes. I was there and then you came and we, we had a trap <laughs> in anticipation and boredom um, while waiting for the West Flatter. And it wasn't that great of an experience, we I think. We were underwhelmed a little bit. Yeah. But this is a different style. We had some strange release they had. It's called Golden or something like that. Yeah. So this will be something, I don't know if we've ever had a trap double, have we? I'm pretty sure we have because we need to give them a shout out. Number one, these glasses that we're drinking out of, we've been drinking out of probably 15 or 20 different Belgian glasses our entire lives. This is by far the superior Belgian chalice you want to drink out of. And the reason why is because that there's these micro rivulets that run along the side of the glass in a symmetrical manner. There is a hexagonal etching at the bottom that lines up with these rivulets. And for whatever reason, the head sustainability and also the pillar of um, fermentation or carbonation, excuse me, that you get through the middle of the glass is more pronounced. So um, if you see the La Trappe beers, what we think is the beers aren't that great, but they make the best chalices in the world. So as far as the nose goes, Dad, why don't you lead us off and talk about what you're detecting? I think this is a pretty typical Belgian double nose. It's very refreshing. It's got a definite malty caramel note. It's got even something along the lines of maybe a little bit of a faint molasses note. Absolutely. Not, not unpleasant though. Nope. It's got some kind of like almost like a caramel apple thing happening too, which is I'm I mean, totally getting that. I'm totally getting that. I'm getting a maple syrup. I'm getting a molasses, like you said. There, there's always prune. <laughs> You're always getting prune and date in these, in these doubles, if they're done right. And ripe fig. And ripe fig. Well, all those are pretty much the same thing. They're very similar to each other. You're, you're, that nose is almost overwhelming with those flavors. It's overwhelming, but it's very floral and or uh, aromatic. That it's not, I mean, it's, it's not cloying. Well, here's another thing I want to say. The Trapped beers don't hide their alcohol very well. This is only 7% ABV. We just got done yeah, drinking an Ublin Chouf. Sniff. And this, yeah. that was a 9% beer, and I detected no alcohol in the palate, what, or the, the, the aroma whatsoever. Yeah, I'm getting a, like a eye-watering <laughs> amount of, of alcoholic aroma coming off of this beer. Are you? you? I'm not. Uh, I think that's your prejudice against the trap coming out of the big Well, I, I want to like this beer. I want to like every beer that I drink, to be okay, honest. Okay, let's dig in. All right. That is absolutely excellent. From that first sip, and I'll, I'm gonna, well, hopefully my opinion is going to evolve from here, I recant everything I've said about the trap. 
My first impression is it's too cold. Yeah, I got that too. In fact, we'll see if we can just talk through this, but I might want to have this sit a little bit. The reason, here's how you know if your beer is too cold. Immediately you get this, this good rush, this bloom of flavor, and it moves through your mouth too quickly, and the back palate is subdued. That's a cat sneezing in the background, by the way. Um, <laughs> if you haven't heard a cat sneeze, I, I don't know how often I have. So beer's too cold, unless you don't want to taste it. Um, like Coors Light, you gotta know if you can't taste it, so the Rockies are blue. Um, or, you know, Bud Light, it's, it's for the many. Not so for the few. Oh, he, he just walked up and he started. Anyway, um, if your beer's too, too cold, it's moving through your mouth too quickly, you're not getting enough of the back palate. And the ingredients aren't sufficiently integrated like they need to be. Or pronounced, I think, is not even integrated. Well, that's right. There's, there's some kind of notes that come out too strongly that ought not to. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to say that's what happened to me initially. The note I got was a sweet potato note. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I had a little bit of a better experience. So I'll put, you say sweet potato? Yes. I got that too. I don't, like I don't want sweet potato in my beer. But it's somehow, I thought it worked. Because I, I immediately I like this. I'm sure I'm going to like it as we go down. It's getting more and more friendly from the nose. Okay, number one. There's chocolate. Number two. There's pistachio. Or there's... Um, what there is... Is, is this walnut or... No, no, you're right, there's pistachio. It's a lint pistachio... Like a dark chocolate pistachio. That's actually like a really 70% dark it's, chocolate or, yeah. or cacao. Yes. Uh, my second sip, sip was completely obliterated the first sip, I have to say. I think it, even because it just breathed and warmed up a little. Yes. I might be overhauling my whole thing about the trap. And I think what happens is you get so excited about Trappist brews because let's be honest, guys, this is like a kind of a secretive sect and order of, of monks. There's a very few of them in the world. They eat cheese, worship God, contemplate, and brew beer all day. And have a code of silence at all their meals. Yeah, so if anybody's going to be able to brew world-shaking beer, it's going to be the Trappists. And I think what happened with us is that we got Trappist snooty, where we just expected <laughs> that every Trappist beer that we drank was going to be um, an answer to prayer, so to speak. And that's just not kind of how either this works or how God works, for that matter. And uh, I got to tell you, though, this is, um, this is really good. This is a very, very good double. It's, it's very rich and thick. And what I'm looking forward to with this I'm going to let you drink them and stop me yammering on, is I'm looking forward to a beer brawl between this and a West Mall Double. Or even more so, a Rochefort 10. I would love to see how this stands up to Rochefort 10 because I'm really enjoying it. Well, Rochefort 10 is, I think, 10.5 ABV. Uh, well, are, are you sure you're not thinking Rochefort 12? Rochefort 12 is 11.7. Really? Yeah. Well, that's 3.5 away from this one. Right. If they mask it well, that's the one thing about this, at, at this current temperature and as we're working through the glass, the alcohol isn't masked that well. It's present. I think that's a problem because if there's too heavy of an al alcohol presence up front and you really don't want that in a, a fairly high ABV beer because what you want is you want it to be masked and you want it to be in the background and you want to encounter it in a way that after you've already encountered the other flavors, that it doesn't overwhelm you, which it seems to do a little bit in this beer. Although I'm not dissing this beer. I agree, and the, the beer being at seven ABV, you expect it to be tucked neatly under the covers without a bump. Um, you don't really want to, you don't think it's gonna be noticeable. But when you walk into a bedroom, there is a little bump there. <laughs> There's a total hump. Yeah. I'm getting roasted malt more so through about the middle of my glass than I did in the beginning of it. 
I'm getting a weird little, not unpleasant, but a weird little charcoal thing happening in there. I think that's probably an accoutrement of the roasted malt. Let me see if I get that too. I'm not going to look for it. Yes, I think the roasted malt yeah. is very interestingly roasted. It gives it almost like a little bit of a burnt flavor. Well, I don't think you... I, I just got it to the charcoal thing. I don't know if you want a, like a Kingsford charcoal deal going on. No, you don't. And it's, but this is very slight. It almost, because of the lack of the subtlety of the alcohol, has almost like a lighter fluid with Kingsford charcoal thing going on. Mm-hmm. Which... I think it's the apple with Kingsford charcoal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got a little bit of the sweetness and like the... Yes, it does. The smokiness. Yeah, that's something to talk about with this beer that's good. I mean, as you see, we're struggling through this. And guys, we're, we're trying to be as honest as we can. We know that negativity and criticism isn't popular, but sometimes beer doesn't taste good. Um, this beer tastes good, but it's not transcendent. I well, just finished my glass. I'm glad I had it, but it didn't blow my socks are off. Are you also glad that it's, you finished it? I'm happy to have finished it, but I, I, it's not that I necessarily wouldn't want more. So I think this is a pleasing beer. I mean, there is that roasted smoky thing going on. I love that in my scotches. Give me an 18 or 21 or Euro Lagavulin any day of the week. Um, you know, Lafroig when I'm feeling really spicy, but... In your beer, you got to be in the mood. You got to be prepared for it. If you show me like a, you know, Samuel Smith's, I wish they made one, like smoked chocolate porter. Okay, well, I'm, I'm prepared for smoke. I'm prepared for chocolate. We're getting those elements in this beer. And what I'm experiencing in this beer that's different from other Trappist beers is everything is very subtle. And I don't know if you can tell from my face, but... It's not arduous, and this is a pleasurable experience. This is a good beer, but it's a little difficult, almost like slalom on a black diamond. I'm, co I'm you know, constantly encountering you're something. You're the moguls, and you're just kind of bouncing around. Yeah, there. you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm drifting diagonally between the two, and I've got some tempo, but um, the ride doesn't have that, that effusive, easy pleasure to it. It's, it's an aggressive kind of... Kind of jolting ride, and if you want that in your beer um, to have a really, really strong roasted malt, a really good uh, dark chocolate presence, maybe a little bit of coffee, um, that this, this this is your this is your double. But I do think it's about eight degrees too cold. Well, when we do the beer brawl, we'll make sure that uh, they're both the same temperature. Yes, that are drinking this is the right one. Um, I like this beer. I just got some raisin at the very end. It's nice when you get different flavors of things. I know it's similar to the Prune Date Fig family, but it's nice when you get different things through the bottle. Um, the, I think the most valuable piece of advice that we can provide before we sign off is if you see the four pack, two doubles, two quads of La Trap, and there's a, there's this glass in there. Buy it. Buy it. The glass alone is worth the spend, and the beer's not so bad either. Signing off. Thanks for watching. That's an interesting.